Welcome to this video on tuberculosis. I'll give a summary at about six minutes. Mycobacterium tuberculosis has caused disease for thousands of years. The little bugger is hard to gram stain. That's why I've written it in pink and in purple because it doesn't stain gram negative or gram positive very well. For that reason, we do what's called an acid fast stain on mycobacterium because it doesn't gram stain well. It's that waxy coat that makes it hard to gram stain. It is estimated that a third of the world has mycobacterium tuberculosis in their lungs. That doesn't mean they're all sick. It could be dormant or it could be active. Dormant, they won't have symptoms. TB is transmitted in droplet aerosols. These are little droplets of water in the air that with as small as just 10 bacteria can be an infective dose. What we're drawing here now is an alveolus of the lung. That little Pac-Man is an alveolar macrophage and its job is to keep you from getting sick by ingesting bacteria or other debris that gets into your lungs. So we want to keep that alveolus clean. Uh-oh, here come the mycobacterium tuberculosis. They form these tangled rods. How did they get into the lungs? Well, through those droplet aerosols. So here's a little droplet aerosol with the mycobacterium inside of it. Mycobacterium has such a waxy coat that it's protected from drying out. That allows it to survive a long time in the air. That's the first step in getting us sick. The second step is that once the mycobacterium gets into our lungs, it can't be destroyed by our macrophages. The macrophages engulf the mycobacterium, but they're typically unable to destroy it. So let's take a look at what can happen once the bacteria are inside of the macrophage. One thing that can happen is that the bacteria just destroys the macrophage and it spreads, it's an active infection and makes the person very sick. But a lot of people have a strong enough immune system that they're able to kind of inhibit the mycobacterium from going anywhere else. So maybe the bacteria can grow slowly. That's a second option. Or the bacteria may be so inhibited by our immune system that it goes completely dormant. This could actually happen for the rest of someone's life. Okay, so here we go, drawing another alveolus, but this time I'm going to show you what happens in the infected stage. So there's that macro. When our immune system is activated, then helper T cells will stimulate our adaptive immunity. Helper T cells are kind of the general lymphocyte that will direct the formation of antibodies and other types of lymphocytes that can form memory cells and be like a guard troop to prevent the mycobacterium from spreading. Our body has another way of trying to prevent mycobacterium tuberculosis from spreading, and that's through a special kind of cell called a fibroblast. These fibroblasts can make collagen fibers that wall off the alveolus and try to keep the mycobacterium tuberculosis from going to any other alveolus. So it quarantines it. The granulomas may even be visible on an x-ray. Sometimes though, the mycobacterium can get into the blood. This is typically going to happen if the pe person's really immunocompromised. For example, they have AIDS or they're malnourished. This immunosuppression means their lymphocytes aren't guarding the alveolus as well, and the mycobacterium can spread into the bloodstream. It is kind of well known for traveling either to the kidneys or the bones if it does this, although it can go lots of other.
Let's compare active and dormant TB. If a person has active TB, they will have blood-tinged cough and a fever. Dormant, they won't. If they have active, they'll be losing weight. In fact, it even used to be called consumption. They will have granulomas in their lungs. The lung will look cloudy. This doesn't happen with the dormant TB. It's not contagious. They will both have a positive TB skin test, though. I'll talk about that in a second. Only the active TB patient will have a positive sputum test. That means the tuberculosis is actually in their spit or it's a sample from deep in their lungs. Since the dormant one is not contagious, you wouldn't expect to see any um, actual bacteria in their sputum. Okay, so now let's talk about how the MAN2 skin test works. What happens with the MAN2 skin test is that a small bit of mycobacterium antigens, so little pieces from the bacteria, are injected into someone's arm. There is a delayed reaction over the next couple of days and a red bump will rise. Measure the bump. If it's big enough, it's considered a positive test. So yes, it's a little subjective. This is called a type 4 hypersensitivity test because it's um, lymphocytes that are responding and it takes them a couple of days to multiply. The last thing I want to mention is the vaccine. It's called the BCG vaccine and it is a live attenuated bovine mycobacterium, so it doesn't cause disease, but it does work as a vaccine. Interestingly, this is currently used in cancer research. Okay, so let's go ahead and look over the whole page for a short review. Review. Number one, the waxy coat of mycobacterium tuberculosis is what allows it to survive for so long in the air. And then it is able to enter the alveolus and be engulfed by macrophages. It may remain dormant or it may become active and spread at this point. Our immune system does try to fight back. Lymphocytes will multiply and surround the alveolus to try and keep the bacterium dormant. Fibroblasts will make lots of collagen fibers to form a granuloma. This is intended to keep the tuberculosis from spreading. If someone's immunosuppressed, then the tuberculosis may be able to get into the bloodstream and spread to other organs. Also, if someone has an overly excessive inflammatory reaction, the tuberculosis can more easily get into the bloodstream. Fibroblasts will make lots of collagen fibers to form a granuloma. This is intended to keep the tuberculosis from spreading. If someone's immunosuppressed, then the tuberculosis may be able to get into the bloodstream and spread to other organs. Also, if someone has an overly excessive inflammatory reaction, the tuberculosis can more easily get into the bloodstream. If someone has dormant or latent TB, they will not have active symptoms, but they will have a positive TB skin test. They should have a negative sputum test. The MAN2 skin test injects TB antigens into the skin and then measures the size of the reaction. The reaction takes a couple of days because it relies upon lymphocyte multiplication in response to the area.